In this video, let's talk about request metrics. So request metrics is a tool I've been using recently to boost my website's performance. Request metrics has a free plan as well as a paid plan, depending on your needs. Uh, you can use the free plan, say, if you have a side project that you're working on, maybe, or perhaps just for your personal project. So you can use request metrics completely for free. Request metrics version three just launched and I'm really excited about Request Metrics version 3 for a couple of different reasons. With other tools that I've used before, I often have to really dig around if I want to find what I need. Whereas with Request Metrics, it feels quite easy and intuitive to drill down into exactly what I'm looking for and get a good breakdown of things. Whether this is drilling down into how a certain page performs or exactly what asset is loading when or what a user is doing in real time. All right, so let's dive in a bit more. I am using madisoncanna.com right now, so I'll click into this site. Okay, so here's our page performance dashboard. So this is kind of our main dashboard and it's showing our page load performance. And of course it includes our core web vitals. We have our LCP, CLS, FCP, try to say that five times fast. Depending on if you're a front-end developer or a founder or you're working on a side project with no code, uh, you could have different levels of familiarity with different parts of this screen. Let's jump into one of these. Let's look at LCP. So here we'll just hit investigate LCP. LCP is a core web vital metric. It represents how quickly the main content of a web page is loaded. Here I can see my LCP over time as well as an LCP summary. I can also filter. So right now I have the reporting period of the last 24 hours. I could switch this. So say, let's just look at the last seven days for LCP. I also love that I have my device filter. So of course we can see users visiting on desktop or mobile, and I have a bunch of custom filters within here. Okay, so let's go into the root here. So just madisoncanna.com where people land. And here we have this LCP element attribution. So if we click on this tooltip. Uh, it's just kind of describing what's going on. So it says these are the top element selectors for elements that were attributed as causing the largest contentful paint during page load time. So these are the elements that I kind of need to work on. I can also see LCP URL attribution. So these are the slow resources essentially. And these are really my header images for when landing on the page. And over here, we can click on LCP URL attribution. So this says these are the top URLs in the case where a remote resource was attributed to causing largest contentful pate. With this header image that seems to be slow, I am using a blurring effect. So a possibility to look into here is, will my blurring effect be slowing down users who are slow visitors because they have to download a blurred image as well as the low resolution image. Okay, if I scroll down more, I can see different things. I can see the browser tab showing what browsers were used to view the site, geography, and then of course users. Clicking on one of these users, I can see a bunch of new things. I can drill down even more. I'm seeing the page load time for this specific user. I'm seeing the load performance. Um, I'm seeing the core web vitals over here on the right. I'm also seeing different things like the source, where they came from, as well as when they were first seen and how long their session actually lasted for. What I really love about this page is this page load timeline. So if I scroll down, I can see exactly what assets were coming in when. One thing I notice here is this kind of little warning flag. So this is kind of showing me, hey, this is kind of a little warning. Why is this so big? So this is something, just a small thing that I need to go and fix right here. I can also click on an analysis right here that's just showing me even more info on the resource performance breakdown. Now my site, madisoncanna.com, it's not a super meaty site. It's kind of just a blog. There's not a ton going on with it and it doesn't have a ton of traffic. But there are a lot of other parts of request metrics that I really love for different projects. For example, you can really drill down into your CLS, your cumulative layout shift. And this is when things are shifting on your page, which is not great for a user experience. So you can go ahead and see what images are shifting, what elements are shifting and how you can fix those. So these are just a few parts of request metrics that I've really enjoyed using so far. This is my first time doing a sponsored video uh, in the last four or five years of doing my YouTube channel and my Twitter and my blog. I've never done a sponsored video before because I only wanted to do one and share something that I really believed in, a product that I really loved. And 
I'm very excited about request metrics and this new launch. I'm gonna keep using it for this site and a few other sites. Again, there is a paid plan, but there's also a completely free plan that you can use for your side project or your personal website. I will leave a link below for you to try out request metrics and get started completely for free.